Yeah, so anyway, um, a limbo champion walks into a bar and loses his title. It's very sad. Oh, hello, good evening. If you're here at the, uh, the Library of Horror Hotel, once again, that must mean it's time for Creepy Cheapies with Dr. Lady, where we look for cool and interesting and noteworthy and reasonably priced latex masks for all my fellow uh, interesting people out there who like latex masks. Great one this week, fantastic mask. This, feast your eyes on it, this uh, Ghoulish Productions creation from 2016 is called simply Robot 1.0. That's right, Robot 1.0. Now old Robot 1.0 here stands out for several reasons, I think. Uh, as you can see, I've, I've got him just on a uh, styrofoam head here, but uh, he's got um, black netting in the eyes, that like mesh fabric, so if you wear it, people can't, can't see your eyes. I like robot masks, I do, and there aren't that many of them about, normally. You know, there aren't nearly so many robot masks as there are, for example, uh, zombies, or werewolves, or skulls, or, you know, uh, vampires. Not, not as many robot masks, but it seems like there should be, because for one thing, it's just a straight up fact of life, robots are cool. Can't argue with that. Everybody knows that. Robots are cool. Now, if I had to guess why there aren't more robot masks, and I don't have to, by the way, it's not as though there are 1940s gangsters with names like Muggsy and Lefty and Noodles uh, with their Tommy guns trained on me, telling me I have to guess, but if I had to guess, why there aren't more uh, robot masks every Halloween, I would guess that it may be because they're not as easy to costume as some types of masks. If you have a zombie or a corpse or a ghoul or, you know, whatever, you can pretty much just throw some um, fake blood on some old clothes and maybe tear some holes in some old clothes in there. You're a zombie or ghoul or corpse or whatever. But the thing I like about robot masks is that they kind of encourage a little more creative thinking. They kind of, you know, spark that creativity in people. And you could have really, uh, really have some fun making yourself a robot costume. And as for what it would look like, well, that's, that's up to you, you know. That's where you use your imagination and come up with something that would look appropriate for a creature with a head like this. Now, he could be a robot from another planet, or he could be an Earth robot, possibly, uh, designed and built by some uh, mad scientist or criminal mastermind or even a superhero, just, just any of that stuff. Or he could be from the future or he could be from sort of an alternate past because he has sort of a uh, steampunk sensibility going on as well. Um, and to that end I will point out the, the little, little, uh, little trails of um, like machine oil running down from the rivets. You see, I love that. And I didn't add that. It comes that way. With it's, it's painted to look like there's a little bit of a bit of a grease stain or an oil stain going on here and there, which is very cool. The eyes have the classic sort of goggle look, and he has the classic bolted on jaw. That's just so cool. There should be more uh, robot masks out there. Now, what would I do if I were going to actually wear this to... Uh, Oh, I don't know, uh, um, a Halloween party, or a sci-fi convention, or uh, a convenience store holdup, or whatever. What would I wear with it? Uh, I would, I would say, make something. You know, make something cool. I've seen some really, uh, really impressive robot-type costumes at conventions in the past. Sometimes made out of stuff as common as, um, like, uh, rubber-made trash cans and uh, those uh, rubber. Um, uh, floor mats that are like non-slip, non-skid surfaces and those uh, um, vinyl or rubber uh, dish draining uh, mats that go next to a sink and the dishes dry on top of Yeah, that stuff sometimes uh, cut and sort of uh, bolted and glued together and um, spray painted with a little metallic paint can really look like, you know, something almost movie quality uh, basically made out of practically junk at low prices, but you have to be creative, you know, maybe add some some straps and buckles and stuff to it here and there so it looks like it's all, you know, put together with separate pieces and maybe uh, maybe some tubes and hoses that look like they'd be providing, uh, you know, power, electricity, fluids to various parts of the robot, but uh, I, I like to see that creativity in people, in other words. 
pants and, and it's always fun. I would have fun designing a, a weird costume to go with this guy. And he's even got a little bit of battle damage. If you can see that, he's got a little little place, kind of like on uh, Boba Fett or some of the Star Wars robots, you know, where there's some damage on there. Very cool. Robot 1.0 and sells for around 50 bucks. Well worth it, I think. And if you're not happy with the uh, the paint job, which I think it's a great paint job for him, I think it's perfect because it has kind of that retro future look. But if you're not happy with that, you could either uh, give it a light dusting of silver or gold. Okay, not gold. Silver, let's say, paint uh, to make it a little a little brighter, a little more silver, a little more robotic um, or old school robotic. Or if you prefer it more grunged up, you could do that and add more of the uh, scuff marks and, and grease spots and oil stains and that. And the reason I said, let me back up just a bit. The reason I said no not gold and corrected myself there is because too many gold paints are harmful to latex. Silver is good, but gold paint on latex, uh, most gold paints eat latex over time and you know shorten the lifespan. So don't put gold paint on, uh, on your masks. And if you actually, if you put any paint on your mask, you should probably yeah, know what you're doing to the extent that either you're using uh, paint that is compatible with latex and uh, you know is appropriate for use on masks or at least uh, if it's just regular um, acrylic craft paint or something you can do that if you airbrush it on lightly so you're just sort of dusting it with that color not a thick coat of it and you can you can customize it although again I think the color scheme they have chosen for him that's this kind of kind of aged, weathered metal, um, I think works great. Although he might look cool in like blue metal too. Maybe that will be uh, offered later as Robot 2.0.